Hi, this is chapter 29 of our novel The Enchanted Wood and this chapter is called The Punishment of the Red Goblins. It's certainly time we dealt with those red goblins, said Mr Whiskers, the chief elf, wiping his long beard with a yellow handkerchief. He had dropped plum juice all down it. And just at that moment there came a great surprise. A deep voice behind them said, Ooh, here's a nice little party. What about coming back with me into Wizardland and doing a few jobs? Everyone turned in dismay. They saw a curious figure above them, leaning down from a big branch. It was a wizard, whose green eyes blinked lazily like a cat's. It's Mighty One the Wizard, said Moonface as he got up to bow, for Mighty One was as mighty as his name. Everyone did the same. It was he, whispered Franny. He's the most powerful wizard in the whole world, whispered back Silky. He's come down the ladder, so that means that the land of red goblins has gone and the land of the wizards has come. They are always on the lookout for servants and I suppose Mighty One has come down to look for some. Well, I'm not going to be a servant for a wizard, said Franny. You won't be, said Silky. He's not a bad fellow. He won't take anyone who doesn't want to go. It's good training for a fairy who wants to learn magic. Mighty One blinked his eyes slowly and looked at the little crowd on the branches before him. I need about a hundred servants to take back with me, he said. Who will come? Nobody said a word. Moonface got up and bowed again. Your Highness, he said. We, none of us, want to leave the Enchanted Wood, where we are so very happy. You may perhaps find others who would like to go back with you. We beg you not to take any of us. Well, said the wizard, sliding his green eyes from one person to another. I haven't much time. My land will swing away from the faraway tree in about an hour. Can you get me the servants I want? If you can, I will not take you. Everyone looked worried, but Joe jumped up with a beaming face. Your Highness, would red goblins do for your servants? Excellently, said Mighty One. They are quiet, uh, sorry, quick and obedient, but goblins would never agree to come with me. They belong to their own land. Moonface, what's his name, and the saucepan man all began to talk at once. Mighty One lifted his hand and then stopped. One at a time, said the wizard. So Moonface spoke. Sir, he said, we have about a hundred goblins boxed up in the middle of the tree. For a while they had us prisoners. It will be very good if you took them. A way to teach them some discipline and some good manners. Mighty One looked astonished. A hundred goblins, he said. That is a very strange. Explain. So Moonface explained. Mighty One was most interested to hear of their adventure. We'll all go down to the bottom of the tree and let the goblins out one by one, said Joe, excited. Come on. What a shock for them when they see the wizard. So they all trooped down the tree and bright rays of the sun, rising sun. Really, it was all most exciting. They came to the trapdoor at the foot of the tree. Behind it, they could hear a lot of shouting and quarrelling and pushing. Don't push! You're squashing me! Moonface unbolted the trapdoor and opened it. Out shot a red goblin and fell on a green cushion of moss. He picked himself up, blinked in the bright sunlight and then turned to run. But Mighty One tapped him with his wand and he stood still. He couldn't move. He looked scared when he saw the wizard. One by one the red goblins tumbled out of the trapdoor and were trapped by the wizard. Ten, twenty, thirty, forty, fifty, sixty. They came shooting out of the trapdoor. Surprised and frightened, sliding gradually down the slippery slip as one after another slid out from the trapdoor. Franny giggled. It was a funny sight to see. It's a very good punishment for those bad goblins, she said to Silky. They came down to the ladder to trap you, and now someone else has trapped them and is taking them back to his land. The red goblin stood in sulky row, quite unable to run away. Quick march, said the wizard. When the last one had slid out of the trapdoor and up the tree went the sulky goblins, it was no use trying to escape. The wizard had put a spell on their legs and they had to go up the top of the tree, through the big white cloud and into wizard land. Just what they deserve, said Joe. My goodness, what an exciting night we've had. 
I did enjoy it. Isn't it cold? said Saucepan Man, shivery. Cold? cried Beth and Fanny, who were feeling hot in the morning sun. Why, it's as warm as it can be. It's because he hasn't got his kettles, said Saucepan. It's hang around him as usual, said what's his name. I expect they feel like a coat of him. Poor old Saucepan. I don't like the look of him without his saucepans, said Franny. He doesn't look right. Can we collect them for him? They're on the ground and all about the tree. So they began to collect the saucepan man's belongings. He was very pleased. They hung his kettles on him and put his saucepans all around him, with his special one for a hat. Some of them were dented and bent, but he didn't mind a bit. There, said Franny, please. Look like yourself now. You looked horrid without all your saucepans on. Like a snail without its shell. And I never had a bell, said Saucepan Man. Shell, I said, said Franny. Smell, said the Saucepan Man, looking round. I can't smell anything at the moment. What sort of smell? Nice or nasty? Shell, not smell, said Franny impatiently. Oh, shell. What shell, said the Saucepan Man. But Franny had forgotten what she was said, and she took her head and laughed. Never mind, she said. We really must go, said Jo. Mother will be awake now and wondering what's happened. To us, oh dear, I do feel sleepy. Come on, girls. They said goodbye to the tree dwellers and set off through the enchanted wood. Silky went back to her house in the tree, wondering what had happened to her clock, which hadn't joined in the adventure at all. It had been fast asleep. Moonface went back to the tree, Yawning, what's his name? And the saucepan man climbed back, so tired that they fell fast asleep before they reached their hole, and had to put safely in the corner of a broad branch by the angry pixie in case they fell down. Dame Washalot went back, making up her mind what not to not to do no washing that day. Soon there was peace in the tree, and only the snores of what's his name could be heard. Far away. Away up the tree in the land of wizards, the red goblins were working hard. Ah, they'd got just what they deserved, haven't they? They wouldn't be in such a hurry to catch other people in future. The three children got home and their mother stared at them in surprise. You are up early this morning, she said. I thought she was still in bed and asleep. Fancy getting up and going for a walk before breakfast like that. How sleepy the children were that day. And dear me, didn't they go to bed early that night? No more wandering through the enchanted wood and up the faraway tree for me tonight, said Joe, as he got into bed. I vote we don't do go there for a long time. It's getting just a bit too exciting. But it wasn't long before they went again, as you will see. And that's the end of